question people ask all the time, and there's no actual logical answer to it. Um, so there is no way to know how much is enough without um, actually doing a ton of statistics. Um, so in general, I tell people that really the number of responses that you have, or actually even your response rate, is relatively unimportant compared to how well those folks represent the people that you are actually trying to survey. Um, so, for instance, if I was doing a pizza survey, I send out an email that says, please take my pizza survey to a bunch of uh, discussion lists, let's say. Um, so, and I get a bunch of people who say, hey, it's a pizza survey, I'll, I'll take the pizza survey. Um, if I'm asking in that survey, do you like pizza? The answers that I get are going to be basically completely worthless because many more people who like pizza are likely to say, hey, I'll take the pizza survey, um, than people who don't, don't like pizza. So it's going to be hugely overrepresentative of people who like pizza. Um, but there are questions in this scenario that you can ask that will be uh, valid regardless of the fact that you practically in an online survey as a nonprofit, you likely cannot prevent this kind of response bias. So you can't prevent there from there being a difference between the type of people who are likely to answer your survey and not. Um, but you, if you think through what they're likely to differ on, you can ask questions that aren't likely to be affected. So for instance, in my pizza example, I could ask, what kind of toppings do you like on my on your pizza? And people, even though you've got a, a vast majority of people who like pizza, they're not necessarily, there's no reason to suspect that people on my list are way more likely to like pepperoni than mushrooms. Unless, of course, I send it to, like, the pepperoni lovers listserv. And then, in case I've got a response bias of a different type.